All right, this is gonna be a relatively raw video. I just want to capture something that I felt during the process of building the seat plate. It's something that I every now and then feel building this custom BMW and maybe you sometimes feel the same way. Maybe if you're more experienced, you might have felt that way, but might have forgotten that that is actually something that kind of is part of the beginning stage of building a custom bike, fabricating parts, learning new skills. It's always things that challenge me that create this feeling. What I'm talking about is that I knew I had to start making the seat plate. That's the next step. But I pushed that out for quite a few days and I asked myself, why? Why, why is it so difficult for me to, to just start and just build it? And I want to capture this in this moment because already now, since I've started, I have kind of lost this feeling, fortunately, because it's moving along. But yeah, this feeling of being overwhelmed, this feeling of not knowing how to start, this feeling of not knowing whether it's gonna turn out good or if it's gonna be shit. That is something that obviously every time you start something new, you probably encounter quite often. And since building a custom bike, if you're not from an engineering background or like a machinist background or anything like that, anything technical, hands-on, you're gonna have this feeling quite often, I guess. At least I have it. And I noticed with the seat plate that I was so much in my head and suddenly I was hyper focused on all of the things that could go wrong and on all of the things that need to go right to create a good seat plate. And maybe this sounds very trivial to you, but there are actually quite a few things that go into building a seat plate. And I felt like there are so many things that I just don't really know how to solve, how to deal with warping of the plate, how to actually get them to fit right all those things because I've never done this before and there, there are so many things that you can't foresee when you do something like this for the first time that it really really kind of like tripped me up for a few days and even during the process I felt the same that going from the template to actually making the seat plate I, I felt the same I was kind of like not really starting immediately and just pushing it out but that doesn't help there are a few things that have helped me a lot. The first thing was to ask for help. And I've made a video about this, about how I found people who helped me with a BMW. I'm gonna link it right here if that's interesting for you. But this time especially, the first second I started, I already encountered a problem where I didn't know how to really solve it or what would be a good way forward. So I called my good friend Nikhil and asked him what he would do. Obviously over the phone, it's not the easiest, but he already gave me a few ideas that I could think about and that helped a lot just having these different concepts, how I could tackle that problem in mind and just think about those for a few hours. And suddenly ideas started to form how I'm gonna solve this problem. That was a big part of me being able to progress with the seat plate. He also suggested to make a template first and that actually was probably the most important tip I got because making a template first was a low-key entrance to, to this whole project. With a template, I didn't have anything to lose. I could use pizza cardboard compared to with the aluminum for the seat plate. So finding a way to experiment with what you want to build without actually having to use the real material or anything that maybe holds you back because you feel like Ah, oh, this is too valuable to, to waste or whatever. So I've actually spent quite some time to not only make a seat plate template, but also form the seat that's going to go on top of it. And that made me aware of a few different things that I needed to look out for when actually building the plate. And then another thing that would have helped me, but I didn't do, would probably have been to just buy more material. Because like this, I only get one shot Otherwise I need to reorder material, it takes a long time. I wouldn't make the deadline for my own video. So all of these things kind of like put this pressure on me that I can't screw up. So by not being able to screw up, I took way, way, way longer 
to actually achieve the final result. And whenever I come to this conclusion that it would actually be better to scrub and just start over because the second time I might improve things, I always have to think about this story of the pottery class where the class is divided in two halves. One half gets the task to make one perfect pot and the other one gets the task to make one pot a day. And then at the end of the period, the pots are gonna be all graded. And the takeaway is that all of the good pots are coming from the class that has to produce one pot a day because the repetition and the practice actually creates the better product than just hyper-focusing on this one try. So for the future, I want to keep that more in mind and just create more room for messing up, for failure, for just starting over and doing it again. So one way to do that would be to just buy more material and not cling on to this one piece of material. And if I screw up, yeah, then, well, screwed. I just wanted to share this with you because it's part of the journey, I guess. At least it's part of my journey. I have these feelings quite a lot. Sometimes it feels like you're standing still and, and you have this like mental block and you're not getting anywhere. But as long as you keep at it, I'm sure that your mind is moving and there will be some solution that presents itself. It's something I had to learn with the seed plate, especially now, that I need to give myself time to experiment, time to try out things, time to make mistakes and not be rushed by a deadline that I set upon myself that sacrifices the process and sacrifices my learning and yeah the opportunity to to build the proper foundation for future custom bike builds and stuff like that so whatever the project is that you're pursuing don't stop what you're doing but take your time allow yourself to make mistakes allow yourself to experiment and then the rest will fall into place